<laughs> Everybody's all slanted over. Yeah. <laughs> we gonna tip? <laughs> no, no. We're not tipping the tender today. Almost there. Yeah, we're pretty close, eh? Uh, a little bit further. Oh, it's pretty exciting. We're here uh, at the uh, headwaters of Puddle Lake and uh, we're gonna head back. We got a expedition put together, expedition crew of three. We got Jeremy, uh, Jason along with me. Uh, so we're just at the top portion right here at the put-in. Uh, we expect to have a, a definitely several kilometers of slogging to go through. Uh, so we're expecting to take a better part of the day to get in. Um, so anyway, we hope for hopefully there's a treasure at the end of this, but uh, stick stick with us. See if we make it. Uh, the black flies are absolutely ridiculous. Just getting totally mauled already. Uh, the mosquitoes will probably be out, but uh, I just stepped away from them. They haven't found me yet. But once we get back down to the water, you'll you'll see. There's a wolf scout here. Look at that. It's all full of deer bones, all crunched up. This doesn't look like deer hair though. This looks like a. I don't know, like really ready for, it's kind of long. I don't think it'd be a squirrel, but maybe, maybe muskrat or something. We should uh, listen for them howling tonight. We should howl to them. We should. It'd be fun. Nice. Give it a try. For sure. Attract them all to our campsite. <laughs> and then eat them. Yeah, yeah. This expedition didn't have just any ordinary origin. It began as nothing more than a possibility from a speck on a map, months passed before we would have a shot to strike a paddle into the waters of so-called Puddle Lake. It was an extremely small lake, ignored by most, with no name, borrowed out of a spring headwater, nestled into a deep pocket no doubt formed through glacial carvings of a time long ago. Aside from hints on maps and loose rumors from locals, nothing solid existed in official records or from ministry biologists. We didn't even know for certain if anyone else had ever reached its shores or had fished its waters. Yes, there may very well be brook trout in those waters, but none could be certain. The creeks flowing at its headwaters hold trout, but the pond itself might be shallow or silty, or worse, contain nothing more than the invasive perch. It was known for certain that perch had been transplanted into the system likely by some careless fishers. Once in, they are impossible to remove and occupy the waters to the detriment of the more fragile and less competitive trout, at certain water temperatures at least. If Puddle Lake had no deep pockets, it wouldn't carry a single trout, but would instead be a pond full of perch. And no troutsman will be happy to make a journey of this magnitude for the likes of the common and easily caught perch. Spiny rayed fishes such as bass and perch have invaded many a brook trout water body and displaced the cold water native trout. When the water is warm, the spiny fish eat food that could otherwise be eaten by trout. At any rate, trout suffer from the existence of spiny fish and they are never good in any circumstance. But so long as the waters remain cold, brook trout can continue to coexist and even use the smaller perch as feed. These waters have artesian sources. Deep upwelling springs provide cool, fresh water that literally wells up from sources beyond sight. This cold water provides trout with suitable spawning habitat as well as refuge from warm summers. Brook trout perform poorly at temperatures above 22 degrees Celsius and prefer the lower range down to one degree. Large brook trout suffer to an even greater extent at higher water temperatures. Water must also be highly oxygenated and also free of pollutants. Limited fishing pressure is also crucial as brook trout are aggressive and strike lures and flies readily. Thus, a water body must meet all these criteria if they are to hold a decent trout population. However, we did not have any records of the depths of the puddle lake. None existed. We didn't even know if brook trout were present in the puddle itself. What we did know was that brook trout were present at its headwaters and then again at its tailwaters so it was also likely that they were present in the pond itself. How are you getting through there, Jerry? Getting through here? Yeah. I'm gonna push and pull. 
Uh -huh. Like Dr. Seuss, the bush will pull you. Alright. No Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> okay? You up for it? Oh yeah. Born ready. Let's do it. I'll just cut this uh, campfire length and we'll take some with us. So we don't waste it. We'd just like you to bring the lumber to the forest. Yeah. <laughs> And this is five seconds later. <laughs> five seconds and 20 feet. You want to crunch the numbers on that? Yeah. <laughs> 20 feet per hour. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Let me catch up. That means you're working. I'm working, yeah. This isn't a creek. <laughs> is it a river? It's an underground river. Yeah. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so how much of this we got left, Jerry? Uh, depends. Maybe another 150 meters, maybe 200, but it... So two football fields? This uh, stuff with all the lying down logs is shorter than the other segment. I think the other segment's just shallow. But we're going to find out. It looks a little different in the summer than the winter. There's actually more water here than I thought there would be, which is good. Yeah, high water, spring. Yeah. This, this is going pretty well, all things considered. I thought it was going to be a lot more brutal. I thought there would be a lot more of this. Yeah, yeah, but it's not going too badly. No, it's not too bad. We figure what, a third of the way, mate? Maybe. Quarter? Mm. A, a quarter? The, the total distance maybe a, or the... Maybe a sixth. A yeah. sixth? <laughs> wow. I don't know. We hope it widens up then, I guess. A sixth time-wise, maybe a quarter distance-wise. Okay, that makes sense. We're getting there then. <laughs> Not refreshing. Yeah, refreshing. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Positive spin, man. <laughs> Pretty gnarly. We found some evidence that somebody's come down the creek. Right here is an old cut. So somebody's been back here doing the same thing we did except a long time ago. You can see back there. You see back there, that's what we floated through. A little, a little dense. Yeah. What's that? A little bit dense. A little bit dense? You're being mean to the creek. <laughs> <laughs> We're the dense ones. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, it might be a bit dense. Max's gonna go that way a bit. Bring it. Oh, I almost got it. <laughs> they take dibs on who's going to get the five foot hole and swim in the waders. So far, so good. <laughs> So, so far so good, pretty arduous though. You see they're 
Just talking to the camera. They're uh, behind me working away. Uh, I'll just flip the camera. I'll show you what we're looking at coming up next. That's that's the gnar we're working through. So I've just cut all the branches, the top branches, so we can pull over the logs. Uh, I don't know if you can see all the black flies. They're pretty bad, but tolerable. They're not really biting too much. And it's nice and cool in the shade here, in the middle of the creek. Those guys are just working away, pulling one, one canoe over, and then I'm working up ahead to clear the path. It seems to be working so far. See if we can continue, and hopefully that opens up a little bit, because if we have to do this the entire way, we're gonna be camping somewhere on the shore tonight. But it looks like it opens up in a swamp here, so we'll check back in in a bit. So we just got through an opening, short opening, and now we're back in the deeper water, but not so bad. Or, uh, I should say narrower water, but not so bad. There's a lot of pullovers. Oh, all right, I gotta turn this off. This adventure was nothing more than an outline of a puddle on a map. Jeremy, in effort to learn more about the system, mounted not one, but two previous winter snowshoe expeditions to reach the shores of Puddle Lake, to do a test fish and check water depth, but came up short both times. It was more passable in the winter since the waters would be frozen and no canoe would be required. What we did know about Puddle Lake was that it had no or very limited access. That much was true. The shores consisted primarily of overgrowth, hilly terrain, tucked between roads and trails. We'd have to access the lake using the creek system. No small feat, it would seem. From experience, we knew the creek itself would be virtually impassable by any novice, or person with any sanity for that matter. In order to reach our destination, we would have to cut, clear, and pry our way through the water system by wading into our cold beginnings, and through sheer force, push, ram, and worm our way in. In all, it would be several hours of grueling and torturous labor to move our two canoes through the tiny creek. We were lucky to come across some easily passable waters dammed by beavers, but even this would wear on us as we would have to be in, out, and then back in to lift over. With all our gear, this would become a chore, and all for the shot at a decent trout. So Jeremy's gonna do something that I would never do. He's gonna stick his face in the spring and take a drink. Before you uh, stir it up, Jer, yep. can you fill this up? Yep. <laughs> Wanted to make him dive for it. Shouldn't do that. What's that? But Les Strauss does it, so. <laughs> but he's only gonna be there for seven days. It's good? Mm -hmm. I think I it know. comes from a pond up top, though. A spring pond. Looking at the topography, uh, it's gotta be pretty damn far away. I don't know, I feel like I have a pretty good sense for uh, water that's good or bad in the bush. It's cold, it's running, there's not a pond anywhere close by. It's gotta be good. Oh, Jer, no, no. Shirt back on. What? You guys don't want me to feed all the flies for you? 
Okay. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway yet? Yep. About half? About half? That's it? About. Yeah. yeah plus or minus 30%. Oh, jeez. It's a slog. More slog. It's not opening up yet. Hopefully soon. In all, it was an adventure that we would not soon forget. More importantly, it was an adventure which included a cohesive team. Without that much, the entire trip would have been a non-starter. Weaker souls would have given up right away or have been stranded part way and returned home in defeat. Or more than likely, not have begun the adventure at all. For them, there would be no value in such an endeavor. But not our team. Our team was strong, determined, and had the right motivation. Jeremy, the wildcrafter, is also an excellent naturalist and an all-around good person. Kind, generous, and always there at your back in case you might stumble and need to be righted. Jeremy is the type that will offer more to his environment than he takes. He is often caught with his hands full of the refuse of others, in effort to purge the wilderness of man-made waste. He is a wealth of knowledge, perpetual student, always eager to learn, and also a proficient instructor. Jeremy will use the plants in the wild, forge, create, build, but also do so without distorting nature's natural balance or consume more than can be done sustainably. Jason, the local trouter, also volunteered to join us for nothing more than a shot at a big brookie. There's nothing that will motivate a trouter more than the thought of t untouched waters chocked full of monster brook trout. As an avid fisherman and bushman, Jason was a wise choice, but he was also someone you could count on to smash his way through a difficult situation and equally patient enough to sit idle while you adjusted your camera gear or cast a line into a pocket of water too small to contain anything larger than a tiny six inch trout. He knew, but still let you have your fun and never complained. We made a good team and the trip was a reflection of the characters that built it. Without a strong desire, with the right demeanor and drive, it wouldn't have been possible to reach Puddle Lake. Lesser persons would have failed or quickly given up in disgust. The North is not a place for the weak or easily dismayed. The North is rugged and thick, and besides, the black flies had just started to hatch and they wouldn't let up just because our hands were full of canoe or cutting a branch. They didn't care to pause so we could lumber, dip or dive or weave ourselves, our gear or in our canoes through a tangle of brush, deadfall or overhang a rock strewn bottom or boulder just to move a few more feet towards our next struggle and in the right direction towards some unnamed pond. We were the ones with a destination in mind. Only the north was standing in our way. What you got? The Great Canadian Cabin. What? I never saw a can like that before. Sunlight. I mean, somebody's been here before. How old does the tab look? It's kind of hard to say. Yeah? What's the best before date on it? <laughs> Consigné. Return for refund. An honest brew makes its own friends. <laughs> It could, it could have washed down. Oh yeah. Spring rains and it all could that. Have come right from the highway. Yeah. All right. So still no evidence of people. <laughs> well, those cut branches. <laughs> wow, that's way back though. We yeah. haven't seen anything recently. No, we haven't. All right. So you're gonna bring it back for your five cents? I mean, ten cents. Ten. Take it to Quebec. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Got the first sight of the lake. We made it after four hours of uh, pure slogging through junk and mess. So let's go have a look. Look at that. <laughs> we 
Okay, so we're at the first puddle lake. Uh, pile around a puddle and uh, check it out with the depth finder, see if we see any deep holes. If it's just a uh, shallow, shallow dishpan lake that's uh, not worth fishing, I guess we'll move on, but we'll check it out. Um, yeah, now we're 30 feet. 30 feet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're not a trout fisherman, you probably don't care about 30 feet of water, but in a lake this size, with a tributary like that, that is that means a lot. That means there's definitely the, the kind of uh, habitat we need for trout. So uh, Jason's gonna drop a line. He's not even gonna wait. He's gonna drop a line and throw it and see what we've got. What are, what are you at now for depth? Forty feet. Oh man, that's awesome. Yeah, so what we're looking at there is 60 feet of water, and what we just can you, saw... Can you shade it from the one side? Because yeah. it's got glare. How right, does that look? Right close. Right close. Yeah. Yeah, like that. We just marked some fish. 64 feet and marked yeah. fish. Suspended about uh, a third of the way down. So say what you said about before, but why it doesn't really... Why we're not going to fish 62 feet of water right now. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're all going to be where the, the action is. They're going to be feeding probably shallow, but uh, it's just just means we're in a good trout lake. Yeah, it means they have habitat all summer long. Yeah. And they're not going to roast in 10 feet of water in uh, the middle of the summer. Yeah. So, yeah, if you find a lake that's only got 10, 15 feet in, the, in July, August, the trout can't tolerate warm temperatures. So if we've got 62 feet and yeah, we're... We have 75 feet. 70, 70, <laughs> 70, 75, 78. Yeah. 78 feet of water in a puddle this size is just is crazy like it could have lake trout in it I mean it probably doesn't could, it, yeah they could it, live here they, uh, and it yeah. could but they it probably doesn't but it, wouldn't, it yeah. could but it definitely means that lake trout can uh, can summer here how big are the fish that you're marking well, I, I I'm having a hard t time with this um it's 83 feet 83 feet there's a, is that a fish at the oh, bottom? yeah that's fish at the bottom a lot of time this marks the thermocline that kind of uh yeah. Easy line. So there's a fish at 73 feet. Potentially. So, you know, it could be a log. <laughs> it could be a log. <laughs> should I drop this tube jig? No, we should uh, gear up and start trolling. Go ahead. So I had a, I had a follow, now I got a fish. Nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at the colors on it. It's beautiful. That's going to be lunch. So I had a I had a follow, now I got a fish. Oh yeah. Look at the colors on it, it's beautiful. That's gonna be lunch. Beautiful fish right there. What do you nice think? Wild spec. You're done, eh? I'm done. You're yeah. done, I gotta go in. Yeah, I gotta yeah. go Let's out. Let's just unload our shit and go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go, one troll. Two casts, that's it. And four hours of portaging. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be worth it. They're just trying to find a camp spot here and it's terrible. Bushy, brushy. Look at the mess back there. This is all, it's all virgin land, so there's no designated camping spot or anything like that. So there's no real flat spot for a tent. You gotta make your own spot. Where all those little seedlings are. I think we'd be better off better that off, way. Up yeah. there, yeah. I mean, maybe closer to the water, but then I don't know. We'll keep looking. Just clearing out a little spot for uh, for our tent, and um, moved a log. This is maybe the biggest blue-spotted salamander that I've seen. Lively. Yeah. I'm just going to move them a little bit further away from our 
campsite. We don't want them to have anything to do with us. Let's stuff them up a little piece of wet soil. And then uh, we'll find somewhere to hide. They like to be damp. So that's my little flat spot so far. Just a little coffin area where I'm gonna hopefully fit my tent. Uh, Jerry filled out or up here. Not totally flat, but better. And then we started a trail up here from the water's edge. We can get kind of up here without killing ourselves. We gotta get rid of that one big log to step over, but we got don't have enough energy today. And this rock. Yeah, that rock. The, the Widowmaker. <laughs> the one you don't see when you're tired. We also need to cut down these two dead trees. Real Widowmakers. Or firewood. No, actually three. Yeah. Those ones wouldn't be good to sleep underneath. So found a few things out at the far end where we first came in off the drop off. I was getting a bunch of hits. I didn't hook anything. I was getting a bunch of hits down there. So there's fish there. But I also tried, uh, was marking so many fish down deep that I dropped it all the way down to the bottom and then just let the wind start taking me back. And I was getting a lot of hits way down deep too. So I think there's, uh, you can kind of see the thermocline on here. There's a lot of activity below there too. What do you think they are that deep? What's that? You think they're trout that deep? Yeah? They're kind of tapping the same way as the, uh, the bay fish were. Did you throw a worm on? Stealing my worm, yeah. Oh yeah? Yeah, they're really good at picking the worm off. There's a lot of hooks on there. I don't know how I'm not hooking up. Well, they're not biting yet. Like I said. <laughs> it's only 2 o'clock. You gotta wait for the evening bite. Just just cast over there for the small one and we're good. good. We could confirmation that they're here. Yeah. That's all that matters for now. Yeah, I feel like drying off might be a nice idea. Are you hungry? I am. I'm a little hungry. Hungry and thirsty. So we should get a, we've got a little bit of a setup. We get a fire going, we'll be set. So we identified a canoe off over here to the right. So Jason's gonna go do some recon and find out what's going on. I'll just show you what we're up to so far. We got a little trail coming up now, pretty rugged. And up this way we have one tent for Jer and Jason, and mine over here on this side. And we have a little bit of a trail. Still working on this. Bit of a mess. Down through here. Obviously we don't have too much room for flat spots for whatever. So we decided we put the fire down this way here. So we have our fire down here, which isn't too bad. Courtesy of Jeremy. Still working away. You wanna have some sausages? Yeah. Not a bad fire. And then down that way, Not a bad fire. we have access to water. What are you offended? Hey, you mean an excellent fire? Excellent fire. It's a beautiful little cooking fire pit. Yep. <laughs> it's gonna taste good too, because I'm starving. Yeah, we never ate lunch. Yeah. What time is it now? Uh, what are we, probably four, five maybe? No, we're later than that. No, are we? No, no, it is, it's four o'clock. Four o'clock, that's why I don't carry a watch, because I know it to the half. And that's all that matters. Anyway, it'd be nice to get some food. We got water boiled, just cooling off now. Waiting for the evening bite. Do uh, you hear Jason went out? He didn't catch anything, but he said he had some hits down deep. So maybe the big trout are down deep. And I don't think he tried casting in shallow, but that's how I got that one. Probably would work if I went back out again, but we've got lots of food to get through. So we don't need it right now, but we will later on. No, it's a real sausage party. <laughs> I don't think the camera picks up all the black flies. No. There's a... Oh, we got one on the lens now. a lot now. of flavor. They, yeah. taste like, they taste like honey. 
These do? The black flies. Oh, yeah, the black flies do? Wild edible number one. <laughs> black flies. We've probably all eaten at least one today. Well, I've eaten two. For sure. Does it count if they're in your lungs? Uh, probably not gas no, them, right? you have to swallow it. Uh -huh. To get the nutrition. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out and fish in a bit. See if we... I just got the last one. Maybe it's the last one. You never know. Hmm. I think it's about the same size as yours. How long did that take? How long? <laughs> look, look, our camp, our camp is right there, yeah. right there, and we trolled. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's great. I mean, a nice native spec like that. What more do you want? Let's see. Show it up. Nice job. Apparently, we're 50 feet right here. 50 feet. 45, and it's uh, marking stuff all over the place. Wow. I'm gonna catch one jigging this spoon just like You might if there's that many in there. Hey, hold it up again. Let's see the colors in there. Right up close. Right up, right up, right up. Close, close, close. Nice. This lake didn't produce any monster brookies, or many fish at all, but it didn't matter. What did matter was having a lake to ourselves, away from crowds and unspoiled wilderness. We didn't have to fight for a choice spot or make a reservation. We simply carved out one for ourselves. We also didn't have to dish out a dime for the privilege of spending the night outside. We had all this nature for the simple cost of bringing ourselves to it. Yes, occasionally we'd hook into a fish, but these were not ordinary fish. They were natural speckled trout, complete with vibrant colors, dark olive green on their backs, blue halos along their flanks, sprinkled with red dots and orange, white edges along their fins and red in their bellies, complete with a square tail and they had an aggressive, scrappy nature to match. They compare nothing at all to their dull, pale, colorless, stocked, pellet-fed, fishery-hatched brother. Nothing. And all this for the cost of being there. It had infinite value, but was entirely free, and it was all ours.
just got two breakfast worth. <laughs> Is that a big one? Bigger. I That's think. my fish. I was working on that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one that was biting my line. We're going to have to all go to three different corners of the lake. <laughs> no, this is it. <laughs> Hold it up there when you get a chance. He caught it on a tube jig. I see them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what is he doing? <laughs> He's popping exactly. the... Grab, well, grab my canoe there, too. Yeah. If you want, if you can. Scooch me right in there. That was my fish that was bumping my line. Let's see your tube jib. Like, show me right close to the camera here. Oh, oh, don't worry about it. Show me the fish first. Yep, there's the fish. Right, right up, right up, close. Oh, oh, oh. Other way, <laughs> other way. That way. Yeah. There you go. That's a beauty. The biggest one so far? What's that one about? Oh, double. That, that's double about 14. The next Maybe an inch bigger than the last. Yeah. I think. You want to string it side by side? Yeah. Oh yeah, so you just dropped the tube dude down and like you're lake trout fishing or something, eh? Uh, yeah, I just was jigging it down there. <laughs> nice. I, well, I don't know why I'm laughing. I think it's like, I was, if I had a tube jig, I'd be using it. <laughs> you're the one that said. I'm like, oh shit, I don't have any tube jigs. <laughs> I see those when you get a chance there. Eh? He's a, kind of a feisty fella. Worth a four hour trek? Oh, yeah. Any day. Still got a little bit of time left. Right? Right. So, a few more hours of fishing left in our trip. Sweet. Frog in the tube jig. Yep. I was going to ask you what if you're trying to reinvent brook trout fishing, and I guess you are. Uh, you mean, you guess I did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's going to come out with the tube jigs next time. I just had a hit. Did you? They're right tucked in this because it's uh it's shaded I think. Yeah, right? yeah, they like this corner. Although I just don't like to be in the sun, so maybe if I spent more time over in the sun, that enough. So everybody throw on your tube jigs. Start jigging for them. Truth is, there's probably just tons of fish in here. Oh yeah. They're probably just stacked in. After we catch, uh, you know, way more fish than we can handle, I'm just going to start throwing the most ridiculous things that I can imagine. <laughs> Might hook a pine cone on. <laughs> Whatever. Did it hit? Bottom, maybe. Yeah. I had a couple bounces right in here. Yeah. I just was trying to figure out what that uh, quacking, boinking over there is. Why don't you just focus on the trout? <laughs> <laughs> We're not having frog legs tonight. Although I'm not against that. Oh, nice. Dude, dude, you get one. I'm going to hit you in the head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you did hit me in the head. Oh. Well, that's what you get for asking silly questions like that. Yeah, a little one. That's a let go. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Truth is, we got so much food, too, to eat tonight. Uh, we can't really... Well, we're going to eat... We're going to save these for breakfast. And uh, eat. we have a venison shoulder we have to eat tonight. Rough. Yeah, too much. Yeah, <laughs> We found another canoe. It's pretty solid. It's all camo. I barely saw it. Only saw it because there was a white pail. Yeah. Tree on top. Might be useful to come back. Then we'll have to carry our canoes. We've got two canoes back here, maybe. Here's a little treasure. That'll come in handy. There's only eight in there. That's a good fire rack. Jason got the fly rod out. Looking at Labrador tea, so the shrub here pretty commonly grows around um, around shoreline habitats, so we're pretty close to the lake right now. And the foolproof way to identify it is it has this really thick down on the underside of the leaves. So it might be white or it might be this kind of orangey brown. And it's a traditional tea leaf. So you can harvest maybe a handful of these and then chop them up 
with a pair of scissors. I'm just going to use the scissors on my multi-tool and we'll throw them into some boiled water and let them steep while the water is just hot. And it's said to have a slightly uh, sedative effect. So we'll see if we all make it out for the evening fish after we uh, have a little bit of this. I don't think anything's going to keep Jason from the evening fish, actually. So you caught me lying. I said I was going to use my multi-tool, but then it turns out to be more efficient just to rip it. Maybe I'll chop it up a little bit after with my multi-tool too. Wintergreen. So the wintergreen you can tell because it's got a really waxy, really tough leaf. Uh, and it's also often splotchy, but it does stay green usually right through the winter, even under the snow. It doesn't die back. And if you're unsure about it, you, it does have a wintergreen flavor, so you can chew the leaf or you can chop it up for a tea. So we're going to enjoy our Labrador tea on its own, but tomorrow we might experiment with a mix. And if you're lucky, you find the berry. This one's been hanging on since last year, right through the winter, just waiting for me. It's like wintergreen candy. But you must deposit the seed somewhere to spread. Yeah, well otherwise you've broken your contract with nature. Right? Like that with plants. That plant gave you a seed to, to go plant it. If I, if I hold it the whole four days we're out here and then just go in a toilet, I've just broken my contract with the wintergreen. That's roadkill deer. <laughs> that, I'm not, we're not lying either. <laughs> it killed uh, just outside Jeremy, or by Jeremy's house, I guess, and he salvaged it, cleaned it all up. So we got the shoulder here and picking off little bits. Oh. That looks like a roast to me. <laughs> and then we got little bits here and the rest in the bag. So it'll be that plus rice. So the show, you know, when they do application video, they want you to, they want to know if you can make like cutlery and stuff. So this is a, this is like a bush fork. Watch. You take it and then you, you stir your stuff around with it. Very technical tool. Show me a spoon. A spoon? Spoon. The other side's the spoon, right? No, there's no such thing as a bush spoon. Is there a bu there's no bush spoon? What do you need a bush spoon for? You just like tilt the thing up and drink it. Yeah. What do you need a bush spoon for? You Oatmeal? You don't need cream. one. You don't need one. You I, pour it in. For ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> you Tell pour us it. You eat your ice cream. You can't you... pour it. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break. Chopsticks. Have you tried to pour ice cream before? You wait, you wait, you wait, and then the whole thing falls on your face. <laughs> you need a spoon. Where's your ice cream? Well, I forgot it on this trip. Well, <laughs> bring it next time. <laughs> or at least you have no point. So anyway, that's a bush fork. And that's all you need. And then you throw it away when you're done so you don't get sick. Okay, action! He tried to do it three <laughs> times. Okay, go. We're good. I, I was cutting this open so we could hurry up and cook it. I thought it was going to take forever, this big lump of meat. But it looks pretty perfect right now. Um, we might be done here. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's done. Yeah. Good job, man. Yeah. <laughs> Don't drop it in the fire. That would, uh, that would suck. You'd still eat it, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just rinse it in that, uh, <laughs> Trody, Trody Lake over there. Rinse it. <laughs> this is real bush life. Real woods. I'm eating, I'm feeding something. <laughs> it's like <laughs> a circle feel really involved. <laughs> yeah, circle of life food chain, man. Yeah. Everybody needs black flies. Mosquitoes. Okay. Those are. I asked for quiet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You've upset the neighborhood. <laughs> have your two seconds of quiet now. Okay, that's our dinner. I wasn't going to say anything, I was going to show it. 
since everybody's being goofy. But now you have to explain the baboon in the neighborhood. Uh, there's always a baboon yeah. in the bunch. The trout are sipping at the surface here. I see a bunch of rings. Yeah, we gotta get this food in our belly and get out there. Mm -hmm. A woman on menopause and hot and cold all over the place. Yeah, that's, on, that's on video. Oh. <laughs> everybody, everybody knows now. That was Jason, by the way. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's. <laughs> that looks actually pretty disgusting on <laughs> video. <laughs> We're smoking the rest of the leg. Well, take your flashlight away and let's see it by the firelight. I guess you don't see no, it. No, I either. can't see it at all. Yeah. It looks all green and everything. That side looks better. Cooked at least. Or smoked. Well, it's more cooked than smoked, I guess. But Oh, well, it'll keep till tomorrow. Yeah. We'll eat it like cavemen. Yeah. Uh, 30 feet, 40 feet. No, no like, like, yeah, like 40. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's a bear, right? Yeah, that was it's a, like, such a bear. It's everywhere. gone now. It's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> Damn sure. <laughs> that was close. What would we have done without it? Probably got eaten by a bear. That's probably true. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good fire now. Yeah, we can actually see now. It was great. Thank you.
I, f I finally figured this fish out. I gotta be quiet because the guys are still sleeping. But the fish are schooling. And that, they're actually back in that corner now, so I gotta go back and get them again, catch up with them. So the guy, <clears throat> the guys just all woke up over there, and uh, the funny part, of course, <laughs> they stop biting. They stop biting. They're not rising anymore. Uh, <laughs> so they, they all slept in. <laughs> now I gotta go show them, <laughs> show them what I got. Just kind of hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. But I don't come all the way out. I don't come all the way out here just to sleep. So I would out. I was. I was out here since uh, since uh, before sunrise, and I pretty much caught my limit. I don't even know. I lost track. But uh, I got breakfast for everybody. We also kept our some fish from yesterday. So we've got lots of food for today. Looks like they're gonna come out now. So I'll have to give them a report and let them know how to do it and let them know that probably they're a little bit too late. But they might catch one or two if they're persistent. So anyway, I gotta go go to shore and show them. So you guys missed a bite, eh? Yeah. <laughs> you figured that? That's right, it was worth it. It was worth it? It was a good sleep? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a great sleep, I just needed to sleep though. All right. All right in here, they they turned on like all of a sudden they just started ripping everything. So I just threw worms out. I missed one out here. I just used a float and a little piece of worm and dragged that because then it won't go down to the bottom. And they they were hit. They were smoking the bobber and everything. Oh, yeah. But they didn't do. They didn't turn on till like an hour ago. Oh yeah. And then they just. They, they smoked everything and they were all in here all feeding in, the, in that corner in that corner yeah. so there's 
just like mostly smaller ones, but a pile of them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but I don't know I haven't they have they stopped in there they were just going they were all in there feeding all going nuts that corner and that corner they kind of school out and then move back in when I went in there well I don't know you could like, go try I went, I, I paddled all the way around, but nothing, I didn't hit anything until, like when I got back here, I was about to quit. So with a little bit more exploration, we found an actual camps, an older campsite. It's got a fire pit, a little fire pit that no one had used for, for at least a while. And uh, we found some old artifacts over here. They weren't in the tree, but They were by the fire. We actually found a minnow trap over here. So this is a much better campsite as far as campsites go. The tent pad here and another tent pad over there and probably one up back in there too. So it looks like we're probably gonna be moving. Not that the other spot is horrible, but this is just a lot more friendly. So it looks like we're gonna move this afternoon. The fish stopped biting. Uh, so yeah, we'll probably have a nice big fish fry after we move everything. So yeah, should be good. Look what I found under a rock, Meester, when I was making the fire pit. Is that a moose tick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like fully engorged. Oh, that's crazy. You can count its legs underneath. There's really fresh uh, moose tracks Whoop. over there that I saw earlier on. Oh. I've never seen that before. You never found a moose tick before? Nope. Oh, I've if you get to the right spot, you'll find hundreds of them. Really, yeah? We'll let it cook on this rock. And then you're going to eat it? Oh, yeah. No, not a chance. You're going all the way in? Yeah. You're on video, let's see. <laughs> Are you ready yet? Yeah. <laughs> Woo! It's cold. <laughs> Woo! I bet. <laughs> <laughs> it's May. <laughs> it's May and that's cold. <laughs> Definitely cold. Okay, so um, leaving the head on, just saying that there's uh, not a whole lot of purpose to it, except that it's kind of good for presentation. I cooked them up the other night with my daughter, and we uh, ate the cheeks out, and that was kind of unique. So you just cut the stomachs and stuff out, and that all comes out. Oh, that's a female, there's some eggs developing. Oh, look at that. So We've got to check the, the oh, yeah, stomachs great, too. Wow, look at that. Great big old perch. Huh. So there you go. Yeah. So this is one of our bigger fish. So he's obviously moved on to small perch for supper. Nice. So yeah. So so then that way there's no cut there at all. I just sliced the stomach stuff, and I'll clean that up later. Um, and yeah. And I know Jer would probably say you can make fish soup oh, with the yeah. heads if you want. You can to. make fish soup out of the heads. There's you can eat the, the trout stomach, which a lot of people find pretty gross, but it ends up tasting a little bit like calamari. <laughs> Yeah, we actually yeah. had it last trip on, uh, we ate the lake trout stomach. Oh yeah. It was calamari lake. Yeah, yeah. It was okay. Yeah. I didn't mind it. It was just kind of chewy. It's kind of a unique thing. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so oh, when I, I can't eat, even see. Uh, the, or the black flies. Yeah. yeah, when I got them, well, I showed that before. Yeah. <coughs> but I don't usually keep the head on, so I thought maybe there might be a reason to keep them on. 
I think it's a huge reason. I think it kind of looks cool when yeah. you're cooking them up. And yeah, it's, it looks uh, all gourmet. Yeah, and uh, like I said, my daughter and I eat the cheeks, just fun little pieces of meat. So how do you get the cheek out after you, oh, once like cooked, after, once after you cooked, cook it? They just pop out, yeah. Cool. You can probably eat, eat the eyeballs too, right? Yeah, she likes to just poke them around the plate and play with them mostly. But <laughs> <laughs> nice. So those are those are those are they're white like that because they're from yesterday, and you can see the difference between, you know, a fresh fish has all its color still. That's from this morning, and then as it goes, the, the skins kind of separate, so it appears white. But those aren't bad. They're not bad because we kept them in the in the water. But yeah, this meat still. It's still good. It's been cool the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Just going to have a look now that Jason's done all the dirty work. I'm going to have a look at the stomach contents on these guys and we'll have an idea about what they've been feeding on. So the one, maybe you already saw that on camera earlier, has a big perch in it. So why would we bother checking the, the stomachs anyway? So we know what they're eating and if we know what they're eating, we know what to catch them with because they might just be focused right in on one thing and uh, if there's a hatch going on right now they, they might have only one thing on their brains so so far we know that the biggest or the bigger fish eat oh perch this one ate a minnow that one's a pretty digested something a bit smaller than this first one and that's all this guy ate and that looks like a smaller stomach there's a little string of eggs yeah. Female. Are we eating these stomachs? Well, we could. We're hungry. Yeah. yeah. We're not that hungry, but... Then we won't have anything for our experiment, though. There's a bunch of bait fish going by. Yeah. Look at them. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Is that one, uh... I don't know what they are. Chubs or something? I guess they smelled those trout in the water already. Alright. Stomach number... Three. It's uh, really full of something. It's full, really slimy. Oh, there's a piece of worm. So that's what we caught that one on, was a piece of worm. <laughs> oh, this one's full, eh? Yeah, I think that's the, big, that's the big one I caught this morning. It's, got, it's hard, whatever's in there. Crayfish? I don't know. Oh, this one's gonna be interesting, so. What have we got here? We've got a bunch of... Is that a sculpin? I don't know. What's this? Oh, there's a worm, a piece of worm in there. That looks like a... I don't know. This is What's... a really digested up... Is that a shrimp? <laughs> it, it looks, looks like a shrimp. A, it's gotta be crayfish. It must be a crayfish, yeah, it's a tail, but it's... it's a tail of a crayfish. Yeah. This yeah. looks like um, a sculpin though. The flat head? Yeah. Or a frog, it's a frog. Oh, a frog, oh cool. Look at that. Huh. See, the, there's the legs. Wow. So this oh. guy was pretty hungry. He ate a frog, a crayfish, a piece of worm from somebody's hook. There's another piece of worm fell out. Another piece of worm. Yeah. And that's uh, that's all that's in this guy. So no bugs yet. We gotta get the bug eaters. Yeah, so these stomachs here are a little bit smaller they, and they're dark, eh? So that usually makes me think that they're full of bugs. So it's always a good guess to presume that the smaller fish are eating insects. Oh yeah, look at all those bugs. And they were feeding on the surface at the time. And that's it, uh, generally what they do. The small, the small fish eat insects, and then the big fish eat. They have to switch to minnows and other bigger oh, items. Lady beetle, we can identify that one. A ladybug. Yeah. What else? This looks like an elmidae beetle. Maybe at a glance, just by the shape of it. We got any chronomids? Oh, this is a big piece of beetle shell. Any chronomids in there? Can you ID chronomids, Jay? Oops. You know what they black, look like? Black mush. Black mush. Yeah. There's another one of those little beetles. We got black mush. So these are all benthic ones, eh? Like the beetles will be on the bottom. They're not uh, surface catching those guys. But there's a lot of hard shell in here. I don't know quite 
what it all belongs to. This is a back swimmer here, or like a, a little water beetle. A little it's shell. A snail. <laughs> a snail shell. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Well, I don't know if you can make it out, but it's there. Yeah. Anyway. Little snail shell. Snail shell. So this guy here, I would say, has been bottom foraging. Yeah. Cool. This is a this is a pretty empty stomach, I think, here. And it's interesting how some some of them have lots of feed and other ones don't, and they're basically in the same habitat. This guy's been feeding on bugs. I see some wings in there. I'm not really sure what it all is though. Cool. This one looks like it's got bugs in it. It's another female. I see the egg sac there. Thought you already fed all these black flies here, Jason. Or we've got three team power now. <laughs> so more bugs. More bugs. They're really hard shell day. Eh? Like these are um there's some beetles. Some little true bugs like the back swimmers and oarsmen, water boatmen. That's what that looks like there too. Cool. Yeah. Good job. So now we know if we want to catch the big fish, we got to use bigger stuff. And when we want to catch the little ones, we got to catch the little stuff. I think that's the take home message. Yeah. You've seen me do this like 10,000 times. So it's just um, roasted garlic and peppers, uh, butter uh, inside the gut cavity, and uh, garlic. That's it. But the most interesting part of this is my tools. So this is. A uh, butter knife. It's more blunt and rounded. It doesn't have like uh, jagged edges or anything like that. It works perfectly. You just put it on like that. It took me a while to craft this, but uh, now that it's made, um, I'll, I'll store it really carefully for any later use. Chris, what do you think that would go for on uh, Etsy? Uh, like a twenty-five-dollar handcraft. A quarter, like a quarter. Yeah. Yeah, 25 cents. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not 25 bucks? No. Pretty standard run of the mill butter knife. Yeah. Oh, this is like the high production. Yeah. I'm, I'm no Jose. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just a regular guy in the woods making tons of trout for lunch. <laughs> you know, this is the real woods, guys. <laughs> Nothing fancy. just kind of troughed it out a little bit with my axe. Um, so so what is it? It. I'm gonna put these two pieces together after I carve them both out and I'm gonna lash them with trout gut and then I'm gonna have a pretty rockin' didgeridoo. No you're not. No. <laughs> you're lying. I'm lying. So this campsite is perfect in almost all ways, including that it has a freshwater spring that's just seeping out of the hill. It's not deep enough to scoop up a water bottle full, and I didn't really want to just dig a hole in it. So I'm going to try and install a little piece of plumbing so we get fresh water running off the end of this trough. I've seen it done in other streams. Usually people will cut down a hollow cedar tree, but I didn't see anything small enough that was hollow, so I made my own. So just up the hill from here you can actually hear the water running under the ground but you can't see it except that the ground is really wet. There's, there's nowhere to scoop water. And then here where we're about 20 feet from the lake it's actually just bubbling out and it's nice and cold like which is really great for trout I think that there's uh, cold water just keeping this lake cold. And I just wanted to channel it out a little bit. I wanted to Sneak a log under there, prop it up, let it let it run clean, and then anytime we want beautiful, delicious, fresh out of deep in the earth water, we just come by. Look at that. We've got a campsite with running water. 
actually a really good flow rate. There's, uh... How many liters is this pot? One? It's, yeah, it's a one. So it's probably like 20 seconds, 30 seconds to fill it. So there's probably two liters a minute of flow here or more of perfect clean, probably potable, like I wouldn't boil this or filter it, water. But you didn't, you didn't hang a jug from a tree. No, I didn't. Well, that's, I mean, <laughs> why wouldn't you hang a jug from a tree? <laughs> because when I've got perfect water like this nearby, I'm not going to bother. But if I was pulling it out of a mystery lake, I probably would use one of those fancy gravity filters. I, of course you would. But, but this one I'm not going to worry about. There you go. Water coming straight out of the ground is pretty sterile. Would you drink? Would you drink that water? This water right here? Yeah. This water right here like this? Colder than fridge temperature. Yeah, it's great. Keep all of our food cold here. So it like it really is a perfect campsite. <clears throat> I bushcrafted a, a spoon now. It's a, it's a stirring spoon. This is only for stirring your noodles because after you just throw it in the fire. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, oh no. Oh, we'll have to edit that out. Well, that, that's got to go back to the, uh, the chef. Yeah. Uh -huh. See? Look at that. That's pretty amazing. Good stuff, eh? Yep. Nice. We got lots of fish, lots of noodles. That's only the small fish. Okay, video on. So the fish are good where you're at. Don't lower them any more than that. This can be a video slash picture. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to see something cool. Yeah, I'll leave that up to you guys. <laughs> Do you think there'll be a second for a shot where we're not all three of us are blinking for black? <laughs> You, you may discard my cooking implements. Okay. We got a tripod with our uh, deer leg now, which uh, we're, we're gonna eat, right? Yep. And that's gonna be safe to eat because we smoked it last night uh, for a while. And now we're just keeping the flies off of it. We'll cut the outside part off, obviously, but the inside should be fine. Kind of a little bit worse for wear. <laughs> You want to talk about it at all? Uh, it's a little bit embarrassing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so why 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 is it still safe to eat then? Oh, why is it still safe to eat? Yeah. Well, it was it was uh, marinated, and then it traveled partially frozen on the first day, and then we had it hanging in the smoke at the end of the first day. It's been sitting out all night, but it was cool last night, and it's sitting in the smoke today. And I did a pretty good sniff test on it. Like usually you'll smell if there's something wrong with it. So what is it about the smoke? Like why? Well, the smoke is going to uh, dry out the outside of it. So it kind of makes a bacteria unfriendly habitat. And it's also going to keep the flies off of it. So they're not going to want to lay eggs. And can you do anything else? Can you do fish like that? Yeah, we've done that. Best fish that I've eaten, I think, was trout that we smoked over alder chips all night. Because we didn't maybe plan to catch our limit but we ended up with more than we could eat and so we had to preserve them. I guess we could have kept them in the creek but we decided to smoke them over a smoky altar chip fire. And should you cook them when you smoke them? Depends on if you've smoked them enough. If you've hot smoked them there then they would be cooked. These ones were kind of cold smoked so we ended up freezing them after and we ate them on a different day but they were... Uh, I, I heard cold smoking is better for long-term storage because you don't actually want to cook it because that'll potentially seal in the moisture. Yeah, you just want to draw all the moisture out of it. Right, so yeah. slowly, without heat, yeah. just smoke. Yeah, I think that's probably right. Yeah, that's what I heard anyway. Yeah, this one's been like warm smoked. 
Yeah, so it, it, it'll be a little bit fresh on the inside, but we don't plan on long-term storage. We're going to eat it, obviously, before we leave. It looks so appetizing. Just a hunk of meaty bone <laughs> over the fire. <laughs> a bunch of bearded dudes standing around, <laughs> licking their chops. <laughs> yeah, it's got some special uh, seasoning on there too, eh? Uh, What's that we like? had a little special something last night. I think it hit the ground, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. after, Pe after. People might infer something odd if you say we added, we all added oh, yeah. special well, seasoning to that. People can make whatever <laughs> assumptions they want, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it fell on the ground. We had a little accident with the fire. Yeah. So it kind of tipped over. But yeah, we'll pick that off. It'll be fine. So we decided to keep at least, uh, or one of the trout, and we're gonna cold smoke it because there was a lot to eat just for the one meal. So we've got it right now. Uh, try that, you see it behind me smoking. Uh, I've added some uh, sticks to keep the gut cavity open so that uh, the moisture doesn't stay inside and spoil the meat. So there you see it right now. Just open it up and uh, the outside Right now it's starting, it's all dried out now, starting to get there. So getting that nice dry texture, not slimy anymore. To the touch, getting leathery. And uh, we might go get some uh, alder branches later on down by the creek. And those will make a nice smoke. Otherwise we use uh, cedar branches. Uh, green cedar works fine, just a little bit here and there. But uh, just keep the fire low and the, the smoke rising and that's all you need. And that'll keep for a bit. I've just been working away boiling my day's water. I'm uh, ahead now by a liter. Uh, two liters actually. Plus I have another one so actually I have three liters right now. The guys have been drinking the spring water since they started. Truth of the matter is the spring water is probably safe to drink. But we're in uh, northern Ontario. And they've been doing it for a number of years, um, but it's uh, it's not 100% foolproof. There are uh, certain instances where you, you might assume that it's it's uh, groundwater and it's pure, but it may come from a pond up above, and it had remained stagnant for a few few days or a few hours, and it's picking up bacteria as it flows through. Uh, water that comes straight out of the earth would be considered uh, free of bacteria. However, it's impossible to know what it's picking up as it comes down. So the guys are taking a risk, taking uh, drinking the the water straight out of the out of the spring. Um, and in a short-term scenario, it would be feasible because uh, things like giardia won't set in for at least seven days anyway. But uh, I, I don't think they're going to get sick. I'm just saying that I I'd rather spend a little bit extra time, boil my water, get ahead. I have two liters of storage, and it's just a safe thing to do. Just the one last risk that you have to take. When you come out, you're always taking risks. Um, you know, you could hurt yourself. Uh, you could eat spoiled meat. Like, you know, some of the stuff we're doing right now is not 100% uh, safe either. It's just a matter of you decide what it is you want uh, to take risks about and water is something that I can control, so I'm not gonna take that risk. So I've been boiling and, and then just, I'm leaving it here to cool so that I can have some nice cool water uh, instead of letting it air dry or air cool I should say. It's a pretty relaxing log. Won't last forever. It's a little bit need some padding. But I'm just listening to the trickle of the spring over there. Jeremy and Jason are out in the boat. They're uh, deep trolling for a lunker brookie because he's still marking some deep. But those fish are pretty tricky to catch because they don't they don't tend to come into the shallows to feed. They'll spend more time suspended in the water column. So they're trying to troll. They've got some heavy weight on, so they're trolling down in the center of the lake to try to pull one up. But they'll be in the 30-foot mark, whereas those smaller fish, like I caught this morning, small to medium size, they'll come up in the shallows to feed. So they, it's a little bit trickier prospect, but at the same time, right now with the with it being about midday, those uh, even the smaller fish will move off, and, and they're trickier to catch. They get out of feeding mode, and so they'll end up in the deeper water. A little bit trickier to catch them. It's not impossible. 
if you uh, work hard enough, you'll get some of the more aggressive fish. But uh, it's uh, it's a little bit more of a luck situation rather than an opportunist situation, which I've learned this morning is that magic hour. I mean, up until then, I had been fishing for about a good couple of hours, and I was nearly about to give up. That's why I was near campsite when I and then they started rising and I picked off a handful of fish inside of uh, half an hour where I had been fishing for you know a good three hours probably before that so and now they're out kind of struggling ab about trying to pick one off in the middle of the day which is a lot harder but we did fish last night uh, also and uh, we had some hits and some follows but we missed the main bite. The main bite would be probably a couple hours early. I think we went out at 8 uh, p.m. And so we had about an hour light left. So we did miss the evening bite. So hoping we'll beat today and we'll get the timing right this time. We'll go out a little bit earlier uh, this time around. And uh, we'll have maybe a snack, pre-dinner snack, and then eat something sort of after dark and stay up a little bit later as we did last yesterday. So all in all, it's pretty good day it's the second day so it's you get to relax a little bit more by third day you're kind of sunk in and, and then you can do some more exploring so we've got some plans to put out the trail camera we've got uh, the guts uh, in a pile and the leftover fish bones we'll probably do that a little bit later today and then maybe pick up some alders for the smoke fire High noon on a bright sunny day is the ideal time to catch up on camp chores such as preparing wood for the evening and cleaning pots and pans left about from breakfast. Then again, midday can present the woodsman with the opportunity to grab a few extra hours of rest. Naturally, rest is rightly put on hold for the morning fish or hunt. Like many animals, fish primarily feed and therefore move about at dusk and dawn, making this time the right time to pursue them. Slowing life at high noon is part of flowing into and with nature. Noon casts a harsh shadow and puts most animals down and for good reason. The heat of the day is strong and can make ordinary tasks far less comfortable. And let's face it, the most magical light of all occurs at the beginning and then repeats once again for a second time at the end of the day. To miss this, by rushing about to prepare for dark, is a great sin. A well-stocked woodpile makes eating a late dinner and long nights without modern conveniences quite enjoyable. Before and just after the sun strikes the top of the trees is pure magic. The woods come alive with activity. Deer, birds, insects of all variety, and all of the rest of nature awaken for the day, and at the other extreme, prepare for nocturnal activities. Using time carefully while in the wilderness means nearly as much as bothering to show up to begin with. We found a little animal run probably beaver where it's coming in and out. It's got its beaver house just around the bay over there where the creek of uh, the mouth creek is. So we're gonna put the trail camera see if we can't get a beaver and or uh, what do you think? Muskrat, otter, something yeah, like that? Bear, fox, bear. Or weasel. True enough, bear, fox, Birds. weasel. So we're coming up here and we're gonna put uh, Jer's got our fish guts and our leftover fish meat in the chip bag here. So where do you want to put it there, Jay? How far does it have to be? Uh, it can take it pretty close, like tighter is better. Like right here? Like, yeah, I can put it on that and you can put it like on the rock or log sure. or Perfect. does that work? That sounds good. Okay.
Oh, some of it smells awful and some of it smells really good. So <laughs> butter and garlic. Good mix of deliciousness and rot. Yeah. So we did I did this experiment before. I set it up for two days with a rotten fish and uh, got nothing. So you can post down your guesses below and I'll post it uh, near the end. We'll find out if we actually successfully got any, attracted any animals. Everybody's afraid of bears, so this is what you don't do, right? To attract bears, so we'll see if we get a bear. My guess is we're not gonna get a bear. We're probably not gonna get anything, but we'll see. Because there's, the animals, when you get in the deep woods, are actually much rarer than people really know. Pretty high up the fit clip, cliff face, eh? We could see the green from the net from the water, so I came up to find out why there was a net here, not realizing that there was also a, an axe and a saw kind of buried in the tree there, which was pretty neat. And there's also a rope tied up on this birch tree here. And then there's another rope tied down on that broken cedar. You can just see it looped around and I pulled up out of the leaves probably well enough rope that would go from the water's edge to the top of the cliff which is a pretty good distance. So we were trying to imagine why why there would be some tools stuck in a tree and a rope on one of the steepest parts of the lake when there are easier ways to get down to the water. So we have a bunch of theories. All speculation. You're not going to tell the story? What do you think? Well Jason thinks that uh, probably at some time there was some lumbering going on over the hill here and a bunch of the lumber guys figured it was a good idea to slide a canoe down the cliff face here and they maybe picked this spot just because it was closer to where they were working so the rope was to get the canoe down to the bottom. We did find a pretty old canoe around the corner right? You you filmed that one I think? I didn't film it no. Oh no. It's an old fiberglass canoe like they don't make that kind anymore. Heavy duty yeah. but a log fell on it. Yeah so that maybe is from however long ago right? Um, I don't know how long ago this place would have been logged but this is not easy access down to the water. Like there's straight rock here and I don't know how easy it is to climb up here. Like I'm a little bit scared to do it because it's so steep and it looks loose but that's presumably where somebody was coming up and down. So maybe we're gonna be adventurous and give it a try. To give you an impression that's pretty much that's pretty much straight down. You see the canoe you can't see the canoe from here, I don't think. But well, yeah, if you look this way, like yeah. that cliff face is only 10 feet away from us and it's a straight drop. Straight down. So the forecast said no rain for three days. And now we've got uh, some rain coming in. And for that reason, I didn't put the tarp or the fly on. And I'm at the other camp because those guys snore and I don't. So I paddled back just now. Holy shit. Giant tree just fell. I don't know, you probably didn't hear that. I hope those guys weren't anywhere near it. So I gotta get my fly on anyway and then I'm gonna go back and give them a hand uh, battening down everything over there. That was a huge noise though. All right, I gotta get this done and get back. That's all the stuff we cut coming in yesterday. Finally made it down the river system. It's all on the shore here. That's all the stuff, all the wood we cut, all the stuff we cut coming through down from the back end, now it's getting blown across the lake because of the high winds. It's pretty amazing. That's that big sound, that log that fell. It fell right in the water. Right there, fresh log. Right behind me. It's still raw inside. Oh yeah. Yeah. Preserved. But raw. Yep.
we're making a bench. We already got I got my saw bound in there, so we had to we had to lever pry it. So now now we're gonna go hatch it. It's not a hatchet; it's a small axe. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> That could be your tagline. Yeah. <laughs> Insulted my masculinity. Yeah, that's right. And my intelligence. Real man doesn't carry a hatchet. He carries a small axe. <laughs> or be smart, a large axe. <laughs> well, depending where he's going. I get out of doing work because I have video. Oh, is that way? Yeah. I wondered why you took out the camera. Yeah. I'm not going to pick up that dirty log. That's the old log by piece of junk. Are you going to film me carrying the new one too? Well, I should, do I get out of work then? I guess so. Or do I have to get the tripod? <laughs> Here, I'll turn it off. I don't know how well I had it firmly planted in the ground there. I kicked it. Jose, hey. what you got? I uh, <laughs> I bushcrafted this spatula. Wow. Using my axe. Um, How long did it take you? Oh, you know, it took me maybe seven minutes of conceptual uh, conceptualizing, and then uh, then it was pretty quick to make after that. Wow. Less than seven minutes. That's like the best one I've ever seen. Well, it's see, it's got two widths actually. It's uh, it's kind of bipolar, so if you just want to scoop a little bit of butter, you use the narrow end. If you want to scoop a little more butter, you can use the wide end. It's not kindling? No. Could it be mistaken for kindling? Well, except that I put it in the shelf of distinction up here, so nobody would confuse it for kindling up there. Gotcha. That's like the utensil cover. Yeah, cover exactly. Or... Yeah, you wouldn't go to your cutlery drawer for kindling, right? No. At home, so... On the shelf of distinction here, that's not where you go looking for kindling. So that venison looks good? Yeah, so... Is it uh, safe to eat? Well... So how, how long has it been out, out of the fridge now, freezer? Well, we took it out Friday morning, traveled with it. Well, that's yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday morning. So it's been two days. 20, 24 hours and a half. 24 and 12 maybe. Without a refrigerator. Yeah. Completely defrosted. Yeah. It's a cold smoke and we still got our fish cold smoking. Yeah. Well, it's more like warm smoking. It's not a legit cold smoke because it's probably pretty warm. And then we have our leftover fish from breakfast and it's been just basically baking all day, light baking, just, just next to the fire all day. So it'll be fine. And uh, we did take some of the venison off. Right there. That's just waste. The outside is a little bit tough. It wouldn't be good to eat. I mean, could probably eat it, but it wouldn't be very palatable, I don't think. A little bit on the burnt side. So, yeah, the pink is uh, what's left, and then just recook it. Cook, recook is a good way to preserve things. And uh, cold smoke, too. Uh, we also have, we didn't show you, but we've re we're using the spring to cool off. Uh, what do you have down at the spring? You have cheese? Oh boy. Chicken? Chicken. Yeah, we have yeah. chicken breast down there in the spring. Worms? It's worms, lots of worms. Yeah, our worms are getting preserved yeah. down there. And the, what's, what would you figure the temperature of the uh, spring is? Five, oh, five degrees? Must be four or five degrees. It'll be around there. You yeah. should give a thermometer here, right? I do. We they should do. test it. Yeah. Yeah. But four or five degrees is the, is the temperature of your fridge, so they can last indefinitely there, and that water's constantly flowing, so it doesn't ever get warm. So that's three ways to preserve your food. Or is that two? Oh, cold smoke. Cook and recook. Cook, recook. Spring. Three ways. There you go. Learning something today. Salt? I remember talking about it, but I don't think I added it. No, <laughs> but it's still good? Salty good, yeah. No, you don't have your plate. It's good. Not ready yet. Yep. Getting there. So for food preservation, we've got 
our worms down here. Our worms are probably the best preserved because as you can see they're covered with moss. So that keeps them really cold, cold and cool. And they'll be nice and happy underground. And then we have uh, those sausages down there. And then the chickens in the bag here. And that's making contact with the running water as well. But if the sun does come out, you don't want the sun to be directly on top. Or you don't want to have direct sunlight. So that moss, as long as it's wet, will be wicking uh, heat away. And so that it won't spoil. And keep in mind that that water is uh, four or five degrees Celsius coming out. And uh, I've also got my water down there cooling, which is nice to have on a hot day. But uh, it's chilling down right now. But uh, it's, it's better than drinking warm water all the time. Anyway, we're gonna go off, uh, do the evening fish, and see how it goes. It's just a bit of, of a chop, the wind picked up, so it might not be the great greatest uh, fishing but sometimes it can get those big ones running so we'll see we had some strikes uh, last night but uh, lots of follow-ups and I wasn't using live bait I was just doing a bit of experimentation with a uh, streamer and I had lots of I had lots of follows uh, but none of them committed to it so this this time I'm using worms we're gonna try to catch breakfast now since uh, we're down to one fish that's the cold smoke right now and we'll probably eat it tonight I would guess uh, as a snack after we uh, after we fish here. All right, so we got I got no fish. I missed two, and uh, they were on the other boat. So I'll flip it over and they can finish up. <laughs> he doesn't see. Okay, there you go. It wasn't. We're both in the frame here. Yeah, you're good now. It, All right. Uh, it wasn't awesome. <laughs> we caught some perch, and uh, Jeremy caught some trout. Yeah, two nice ones. Yeah. Me? <laughs> well, there were nice trout. Well, I'll, I'll go, that's <laughs> trout that I've caught. I'll go. Yeah. I'll go do a video now because it's obviously dark. But yep. cool. Right on. Yeah. All right. Tomorrow. Yep. So what's the what's the problem there? You know what the <laughs> damn problem is? We had two damn trout. Now we got one one damn trout. <laughs> what the hell is going on? The and, knots didn't slip. And the funny thing is, is I lost my trout. I lost one of my trout from last night. Yeah, we thought you just didn't know how to tie knots. Yeah, now it's... The bearded, the bearded <laughs> woodsman can't tie a damn knot. You know, you know what's actually happened here. He took one off. Oh, yeah. So we can't tease him with his <laughs> That's probably let's, what's going let's on. Let's pat him down. He's probably got it in his pocket. Yeah, yeah. That would be funny, but I didn't think of doing that. Uh, <laughs> I le that's man. legit, man. There is only one trout there. Okay, so we're getting hustled here. No, I didn't. Uh, no, I'm not joking. Turtle, Turtle hustle. There's... Uh, there was a there was something going on in the water. Is it, are those all bubbles? Yeah. I I just threw that frog in. Yeah, the, the frog in the trail. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, when I came and looked and I shined the light, there was like a like a tussle in the water. There but was a tussle, eh? But I it noticed. Could be splashing. They could be. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. But why would they be messing like well, something? Because they want to get away. Okay. So long story short, we should put these somewhere else other than in the lake. Yeah. In the creek? In the spring? Yeah, yeah well. in the spring. Well, they, someone could grab it in the spring yeah, too, tur but... Turtles hate springs. <laughs> but well, you yeah. want to just put them in some cold spring water? Okay. So we sacrificed a little perch, which are invasive, by the way. And they don't belong in the system. So we're going to use this as an experiment. So if this is missing in the morning, then we know for sure... You better do a really good knot on there, or else we'll blame you on the knot, although it's dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's not going to slip that knot. Alright, All right, so that's going to be the test. Yep. This is missing, then we've got a thief. Legit. Alright, this is going to be last video for today. Uh, that was funny how we lost two trout to uh, probably a turtle, by the looks of things. But uh, that was our fourth way of preserving food, which was by keeping food alive. Naturally, it must be protected at all times. But uh, yeah, if, uh, if a fish is alive and breathing and, and moving its gills, then uh, it's uh, 
providing itself with oxygen and that means that it's fighting off of infection so it's not rotting so that's the fourth way we can preserve food but it's kind of interesting you get you have to still have to protect your food because your food isn't necessarily yours until you eat it and uh, that's the fifth way to store food it's actually eating it but we've had so much extra food that we've had to uh, incorporate food preservation techniques and uh, so it's kind of interesting how that sort of played out and how we lost a couple that way anyway that's it for today I paddled back across the lake in the dark and I'm sleeping on the other side of the lake to avoid all the snoring and racket and uh, kind of feel isolated over here and a little bit lonely but it's that immediate sort of uh, withdrawal from being with other people and having the protection of a group to being by myself so uh, but I'm only sleeping here and I'll, I'll go back actually in the morning I'll fish and then we'll go back for breakfast so it'll resume so it's just temporary so I'll catch up with uh, on day oh, I think it's blending together day three I suppose but anyway talk to you later <laughs> If the tent's rocking, don't come knocking. <laughs> <laughs> I got all that. That's a video. <laughs> it's a fucking. Uh, you gotta pump it up. No, no. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. We wake up in the middle of the night, and this is what he's doing. <laughs> Here, I'll let, I'll show everybody what you're doing. It's a pump. Yeah. So yeah, this is how you pressure. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on in, Jer. Everything's ready. <laughs> <laughs>bed was feeling mighty warm this morning but we got to get up to uh, catch breakfast or I should say I got to get up boys are at the other camp across the way so I'm gonna get my stuff ready and try to catch some breakfast uh, they've got only one trout and a bunch of perch to spare this morning for breakfast and uh, I try to triple or quadruple that it would be nice to have a couple trout each so we'll see what this lake can produce this morning. Yesterday, oh, I see one rise. I gotta get out there. So far, no fish. Oh, I'll pile a little perch. And I think that's the problem with this lake. This lake could be a really good lake, but uh, I think the perch are holding it back. Any spiny fish like bass or perch can really kill a, a trout population. And uh, not for any other reason, because the, the trout can't compete at the warmer temperatures. And they're competing for the same types of food. So when perch invade uh, trout uh, water body, then they end up decimating uh, the trout, because the, the trout just can't compete once it gets really warm. So we've caught some of the, some of the bigger trout, and those are the more, probably the more aggressive ones. So it could be that what we're left with is uh, a, a bunch of perch. But uh, I mean, there's still trout in here. There's trout all the way through the creek system we saw yesterday. But uh, I think that's what holding it's holding this system back from its full potential. Um, yeah, definitely. Like the MNR biologist told me about perch being in a system. Like there's bass in Algonquin Park now, and that's uh, not good for the the trout population. I know some lakes where the ba uh, bass have thrived. That used to be really good trout and uh, not so much anymore. So I think I figured out what the problem with this lake is. It's a perch. <laughs> think about every perch we've caught. What have we got, like a dozen? Like I caught six or seven this morning. Those could all be trout, right? It's the biomass of the lake. If, it's, uh, if perch and bass get in the system, then it ends up being perch and bass instead of trout. Because they can't compete at a certain temperature.
all these little lakes and streams are not really supposed to have perch in them. But do what you can. Yep. I'll wait for the bite to start. It's not on yet. Wait till they start rising. Yeah. Did you catch my boat? Such a good production team here. You look like you caught some goldfish there too. Yeah, I got I got a bait, I got perch. The bait ain't so bad, it's the spiny ray fish that the MNR guy said. Yeah. Like the perch and bass. But uh, the minnow population's fine, it doesn't really bother anything. Well and that's there's lots of good food for big trout here, right? Yeah. I wish I could remember what those guys are called. Well we can Use them for bait, or we can eat them this morning. Yeah. You have chicken, you can eat the fish. <laughs> you don't eat the garbage fish. <laughs> we'll eat the perch for I, sure. I would eat them actually. That doesn't bother me. Yeah. Beautiful color. As far as fishing goes, we've tried everything. We've tried uh, spoons, spinners, little map spinners, uh, like that. The spinners have, have produced a little bit, uh, but I keep coming back. Like Jeremy caught yesterday, uh, his two on a third of a worm, uh, half a worm, just like I do for creek fishing, just thread it up. And uh, just to put some weight on it, we've kept our swivels on. Like there's a slap swivel up here. Um, and that's giving it enough weight so that we can cast it. And we're just, I'm working it exactly the same way as it would in the creek. Just casting and jigging it back. And uh, that seems to be the trick. Um, the spinners, like I say, they're not, they're producing when they're hitting, but you know, like when they're biting. But otherwise, just like plopping them in and kind of working like bass fishing, just hitting little spots. And I did the same thing over there, that one. Uh, in the back in the corner, I've been sitting there for a long time, freezing my butt off. It's windy at this end, and I'm in the shade. So it's been it's been a different morning anyway. Last uh, last morning, it was calmer. So if we 
because it was calm in the flat water, I think the insects all came up and that produced that nice hatch. So really I got them in feeding mode and they were hitting the, I had a float on the other day and I was casting the float on with the worm and dragging that back and they were smacking the float. So definitely a different morning this morning. How'd you guys do? Did all right. Got a couple of small ones. Yeah, enough for breakfast? Uh, yeah, enough to augment our oatmeal. <laughs> Let's see them. Yeah, they're not big. They're we beauties, let, though. We let some smaller ones go, but uh, these we can snack on. Right on. They're still using the worms? Yeah, a little, little uh, piece of worm on the end of a Panther Martin there. Yeah. And then Jared was using a straight hook. Pretty yeah. Worm. Cool. There we go. Yeah, one good size one. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One good size one and one small one, I ended up kind of hooking it in the eye, so. Yeah. Gotta keep it? Yeah. Anyway, we'll get back for some breakfast. It's a lot warmer on this side, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Freezing over there. Alright, back to the campfire. So, as far as fishing goes, is it okay? But I'm a trout fisherman, so I only count the trout, but I've caught like. pile of other fish, little perch and whatnot, and uh, those are fine to eat too, there's nothing wrong with them, they're just on the smaller side for perch, but we're taking them out because they don't actually belong in the system, so it's kind of to do our share for the uh, natural population. Um, but yeah, in a survival situation, that's plenty of food, and if, you know, if they're too small to eat, then they can always be turned into bait to attract uh, another animal or uh, or even cut back up and use for bigger fish. I've just set up our emergency stash of fish down in the, the chiller. That'll keep those fish at uh, about four or five degrees Celsius. We still haven't Put the thermometer in there, but it's awfully cold. Refrigerator cold. I don't think it matters too much what kind of uh, wood it is, as long as it's not too soft, and as long as you don't get too much. You, you gotta get the bark off so you don't get much flavor in the meat. Yeah, that's all. Just like cooking up a, just like making up a hot dog stick. Yeah, like you wouldn't want to use a cherry stick because of the or balsam or yeah, the flavor. Yeah. yeah. So uh, all I think about when I'm poking these is I want to get it right along the spine so it's like right in there with the spine so that once the meat starts cooking the fish doesn't fall off the steak. So it's a bit tricky because obviously they're not built to have something jammed on along their spine but kind of feel your way through. There it is. Hey, can, you then, can you flip that around? I want to see where it ends up at the back. Do you put it all the way no, down to the tail? Yeah, I can feel it right here. Yeah. Oh, so it's down in the in the muscle. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's like so. you went through the roof of the mouth. Yeah, and then kind of followed on the top side of the spine. And you should be able to um, flip it around and all that kind of thing. That's the general idea. In fact, it'd probably be smarter to start it with this side down because that'll this is where the most meat is. It'll take the longest. It's nice, we still have the heart on this one. It's great. We all get our vitamins. It's 
So you're just going basically up in, in a little bit of the muscle. Yeah. Down as close as you can to the backbone. Yeah. It's just like cooking a hot dog. It's almost exactly like cooking a hot dog. Just a bit fishier. Well, my hand is really hot, so I'm in the zone. <laughs> nice. Sit back first, Dave. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, so as it starts to cook, you can see that it is opening up, and this one will do that too. And you'll see, you'll be able to tell that it's done by um, when the meat's, but, but beside the spine, it's cooked, you know. How do you check that? You cut it open you a little almost, bit? You can almost kind of see from yeah, here. Yeah, you can kind of tell? Yeah. you make there Jerry? Uh, just a figure four trap for demonstration. Demonstration? We're not going to catch them at camp? I don't think so. Maybe a little red squirrel? Somebody might trip on it in the night, pale themselves on one of these little sticks. It could really hurt themselves. That's like, it's a really brutal one. Like yeah. Maybe... It's a good solid half a pound log right there. Yeah, well and I was going to sharpen these <laughs> too, right? So Sam Squatch. <laughs> the fish stealer. That's so right. it's just demonstration, obviously. Eh? You just you use a bigger log. But even, yeah, a bigger log, you could put guide posts so you know it's going to fall straight. It's not going to have that side-to-side -side movement. And either you can bait it or you can put it on a run, right? So if something's coming through and it just touches that, then, you know, oh, now it just wants to twist all over the place. <laughs> yeah. but, but then the log comes down and crushes them. So maybe we'll set that up, uh, the bait, just to test it. Yeah, just to get it on video. Not kill anything. Some poor squirrel just getting a small concussion. <laughs> I'm gonna set one up in my kitchen. Yeah. Put some M&Ms under it. My daughter's gonna. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Good traps. Yeah. Okay, so these look done. This this I didn't poke in properly. It ended up breaking through the skin, and at some point along the way, it it becomes pretty impossible to have them this way. They just gravity takes over and they fall down. <clears throat> but they're cooked. We'll be able to pull these apart, pull the meat off the uh, bone, pull the skin off, and it'll be delicious. So how do we know it's finished then? Just like, by feeling this is it? The, this is like the last part and to me I can just tell it by feel that it's not very squishy anymore. You want to kind of dry it out? Yeah, okay. kind of more solid. Cool. Yep. How's that look? Perfect. That looks great, yeah. Kind of making a mess here. That's right. Looks good to me. I'm like these ones, which look awful. Mm. That's gonna be delicious. <laughs> yeah, we just found three adult moose ticks. So everybody's stripping down. Well, like, they're full of moose blood. Well, well, yeah. Those guys were full of moose blood, but there has to be some hungry ones around here somewhere. Yeah. Luckily, they're not on our bodies so far. Well, the moose might have picked them up in a beaver meadow somewhere, right? Or oh yeah. And then they, then they travel on the moose, and then they all kind of drop off when the mooses are shedding. Or... <laughs> so everybody pulled off. Eh? Look so good, we, good so far. We checked ourselves. We didn't check each other. <laughs> <laughs> it was a communal check, but not yeah. communally. But when you say everybody pulled off and everybody feels good now, <laughs> like we're talking about <laughs> moose ticks, right? <laughs> you can't put that on YouTube. Edit that. <laughs> Just a mess. It's funny that there were three all at once. Yeah, three, three came out all the same square, two square feet. So, like a bad joke. Kind of concerned whether there are some little ones around that might latch on. So, I have to keep an eye on that. Throw that one away, Chris? There was two on a log. Are they still there? Oh, you didn't. The no, I didn't because I, w I was more concerned with checking here. There, we got the. There's just one. Just one? There? there should be two. There should be another one there. Look at the legs on them, so nasty looking. But they taste like grapes, right, eh? When you pop them between the molars? Uh, Have you really actually like eaten one before? Oh, God. I find they taste like the. Uh, <laughs> you know when you get the raisins coated in white chocolate? <laughs> yeah, they look like that. Okay, so we want to know how old this fish is. We're kind of curious. So I know that we can uh, uh, kind of rip it. 
we can have a look at this piece. And I think that you can count it just like a tree ring. We may have to get back to this. We left a lot of flesh on there, but it looks maybe like three. I don't know. Well, I'm going to have a closer look at this. Okay. So I'm not sure if I'm doing this right, but um, this is, I think you start counting from here and you can kind of count one, two, three. I, I got to get closer here. One, two, three ish. So if that's right, then that makes this a three year old fish. And is that a good size for a three year old fish? <laughs> yeah. Probably, probably not. Uh, yeah, well, a three year old fish should be the water system they're in, right? Yeah, a three year old fish yeah. should probably be about three, four pounds. Well, depending where you're at. Depending where yeah. you're at. But here, the capacity for this lake is yeah. to produce uh, a 13, 14 inch fish at three years. That's what we want. So to get to get a trophy <laughs> fish, your the productivity is just not here. Right? Or, you, or you have to catch twelve year old fish. Yeah, yeah. Do they just exist? W just wait for it to keep growing. <laughs> And would it like do they just expire I'd, like they don't just die they go after five, five, years. five or six years yeah 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 they'll just die of old age oh yeah so that makes you, sense do you see really, the rings there well i see um one two three. yeah i don't know like having never done it before like i also see some cracks in the gill plate is there still skin over it yeah there's skin on both sides oh and it should have all been taken it off, won't like, peel yeah yeah because it's well, all let's, cooked on there let's do it with one of our other fish then yeah what about these guys here? Is it too late to uh, pull a gill plate off of these guys? I kind of don't want to mess with these right now. No. <laughs> They're doing just They're great. precariously <laughs> balanced. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's try it on some of our fresh fish after. Sure. What I'm going to do is... Oh. We're trying to get further down the creek to see if there's any more promising water. So we got to get through this log jam at the end of the lake here. So Jeremy's going to... Fall off the log and make a great YouTube video. I'm gonna sit out and watch the show. We're trying to get further down the creek to see if there's any more promising water, so we got to get through this log jam at the end of the lake here. So Jeremy's gonna fall off the log and make a great YouTube video. I'm gonna sit out and watch the show. Can you swim, Jer? No. I should let him concentrate, or we should not let him concentrate. We should shake the log. <laughs> Don't, don't do that one. Yeah, no, no, that one's good. <laughs> that one's fine, Jer. <laughs> <laughs> That's the log roller for later. Yep. What just went overboard? I think it just scraped. Well, glad I could entertain you guys. Ooh. He's gonna flip now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. Right? <laughs> ah. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> oh, trout tickling. Uh, as big as any of the trout we caught. No. Trout tickle them. Come on, Jer. You got the waders on too. You're all set. I wonder where he went. I'm, ke I'm keeping that cast in. <laughs> it's pretty shallow for quite a ways. Yeah. Nice little native brookie from the creek. Wasn't 
road anyway. No? No. We just found a spot where every trout fisherman dreams about. Oh, and the other lake is here too. That's not far at all. But look at this. Look at this this pool in a remote area after a nice run like that is going to be chocked full of fish. Absolutely chocked full of fish. There's a keeper! Show me. That's a nice fish. Show me. How big? <laughs> Ten? Oh no! I'd say nine, ten. Nice. Like yeah. I'm gonna put it in my pocket so it doesn't go back to the creek. <laughs> That's a great fish for a creek. Ten inch. See if we can get a couple more for dinner. Hold it up. Uh, eight? Well, like seven inch, eight inch, something like that. So after a little bit of bushwhacking, we actually made it to another pond way off in the distance. And if we had planned for it, we could have probably spent the day at this other section, but we'd have to, have to portage through the woods because there's no way to get through that little section there without a whole lot of cutting. So we'll have to go check this out. Maybe for a future trip, we can make it to Puddle Lake number two. So that's a bivalve, a clam. I just found them down there. Right in the water you can see. They're right down in here. Piles of them, you can see the foot. The foot just closed up. You gotta boil them. Once you boil them, they'll open up and you're all set to go. But uh, bivalves are edible and easier to catch than trout once you find them. But they're littered all on this edge here. Whole pile of them. Freshwater clams or bivalves are edible, but not a first choice of food as their flavor cannot be guaranteed. Since they are filter feeders, how they taste is primarily due to the water in which they are found. Clams tend to pick up pollutants, toxins, and other substances from the water. Freshwater clams can also live for years, even decades, and can therefore bioaccumulate toxins. The Ontario Guide to Eating Sport Fish, produced by our Ministry of Natural Resources, does not recommend eating freshwater clams. They say that while they are usually low in chemical contaminants, they may harbor harmful bacteria and other pathogens. For this reason, they must be fully and carefully cooked so as to avoid food poisoning. Freshwater clams are also on the decline all over the world from pollution, habitat destruction, and declining fish species, which serve as hosts for the larvae. Thus, they should be harvested with care.
Cattails are one of nature's best survival plants. Nearly the entire plant can be used from the roots right up through their shoots. If you time it just right, you can collect the yellow pollen by shaking it off into a bag or other container. This can be used as flour in baking. It makes excellent pancakes when mixed with other flour. The roots store most of the energy in spring and winter and this can be pounded and leached into water and then dried or water poured off and turned into flour for baking and cooking. Roots can also be dried and then pounded into water or roasted over a fire. When possible, the fiber should be removed or separated to avoid stomach upset. The stems are rich in starches and produce more per area than almost any other, even when compared to rice and potatoes. In spring, the bases of fresh shoots can be consumed raw, but care should be exerted as they may pick up parasites found in the water itself. The dried heads found in the fall and throughout the winter make great tinder and brown stalks can even be used in friction fire as a spindle. Cordage can also be made from cattails. Cattail are easy to identify, but younger plants can be misidentified with three other toxic variety. Look for oval shaped bases, they should not be flat. The taste should be mild and with little aroma. Cattails make a great wild edible. We got to uh, Puddle Lake number two. And I took off my waders because I was sweaty. And my socks, and my backpack, and my shirt. And that's as much of you as I'm going to show. And I climbed up, 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 up there. And from up there, looking down here, this turtle was amazing because uh, this whole bay is super super shallow and you could just see this turtle he's basically walking he's not swimming he's walking on this mud and just moving along slow and leaving a big dust trail in his path uh, though I didn't get all the way to the top because I saw that turtle and I wanted to run back down for whatever reason I left my camera down here but um, everything that I can see from up on that rock is shallow which is uh does not bode very well for trophy unfished brook trout. Probably all you can hear is the wind. It's a little bit mushy in there. It's like something you buy in a fancy shop. <laughs> Does it? So this is what? What? How many days? Two. One day. Yesterday. Two days. Two days preserved. It's a little bit um, moist on the inside, so it's kind of like. Uh, what do you say? No. Like sushi? Would, yeah. It's got like kind of a mushy texture. The outside is really hard. But the inside's mushy. Even though that outside skin is uh, hard though, like it's still chewable. Yeah, for sure. Okay? Like it's not, it's not like you just peel it off and throw it away. It's weird. So we've come to the conclusion that we maybe should have butterflied the the uh, trout just to have it more exposed. It's probably fine. It's, it seems like it's more cooked than than uh, smoked. So when you do that, maybe you want to debone it. This is something that we didn't do. 
uh, we just kind of left it hanging. But uh, you can pull the backbone all the way out and open it up, which will expose more of the meat to the smoke. So keep that in mind if you do decide to try it. And I just threw it back on, just now, just on the rack, to finish it off. So if nothing else, at least it, we preserved it without a refrigerator for uh, two days. So just the smoke keeping the bacteria off the fish and um, and the, fl uh, the blowflies off of it too. So you in my picture? What are you eat, what are you eating back there? You better be eating fish or something. Uh, yeah. yeah, you are. He is eating it. Oh. There you go. It uh, didn't spoil, and then you can just finish it off like that. If you mess it up, it's still not wasted. And we ate. We st we're still eating the whole thing anyway. You want to show me the catch of the day? Catch of the day. Biggest, <laughs> the biggest perch in the lake. The biggest, dirtiest perch. That is a big, dirty perch. Yeah. Probably looks big when it's way out in front of me, eh? But oh yeah, you, gotta, you have to hold it way out. It's a big, it's a big perch for this little lake, anyway. Do I look really happy about it? <laughs> no. I wish, a, I wish it was a trout. It's a bad lake or bad fish for this lake. Yeah. Because they don't belong here. Yeah. A couple of trout. So here's a glimpse of our productivity for today and yesterday we've got perch, we have some brook trout, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we have some bivalves, 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 bivalves over there, and then we've got some small perch over here. So we've got quite a bit. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we could get an unlimited amount of bivalves as we found a treasure trove in that shallow bay. And we have a ready made cooler over here which cools boiled down water. And it's a good sink for washing up in. So, all in all, pretty good. It's chaos. We traded jobs, I guess. Eh? Totally chaotic. We got perch, brook trout, clams and mussels on the boil. We also got one just popped open right there. No mussels. No, no, clams. They're not mussels. That's how new I am to clams. Look at that. You got a light on there, Jerry? Yeah. In case you've got the brighter light. That's okay, that works. Lots of light. Yeah. Nice. And the uh, rookies are in the tin foil. Want to do another muscle? We can show how to do it. Sure. Or clam. Then we get fired soon from narration. One up here. I have a glove. Where are they? Oh, well, this one's already open. So we, oh, we just that. put it by the flint. Or you got your light there? Oh yeah. Can't see. There we go. So that one opened by itself. So there's usually an attachment point. It's the adductor muscle. You can see this. The yeah. adductor muscle. Can you stuff. show it to the camera? Uh, I think it was right there. Yeah, that, that little, little round circle. So you got to get your if it doesn't open up, you got to get your knife in there and uh, and cut it with your knife once it opens a little bit. And there's one at the front and the back, or just the just the one, just one side, just the one side. And so then there the you foot go. Goes up the other side, I think. And then once that's open up, then we can fry it, right? Scoop it out and fry it. Yeah. So here's the uh, this is the gill. Uh huh. So you don't and need the gill part. This or? is the foot. Right. Um, these are the, I forget what you call them, the labia or the <laughs> lamel, lamelle or? So they're, they're uh, hermaphroditic? Or no? Uh, I can't 
can't remember. So that's a female then? <laughs> no, no, because it's got, no, it's just like the two <laughs> folds on the side. You see it call it a labia? Yeah, or it might be part of the mantle, right? Like the mantle secretes the, the chemicals that make up the um, hard shell. So this is, might be the edge of the mantle. And of all the things we collected today, this was the easiest? Yeah, <laughs> by for far. sure. Then we could make a living off of eating just this because there's literally piles of them in that bay here. Until we ate them all. Until we ate them all, which apparently is, is possible to do. Yeah, there are lots of endemic species and extinct uh, and endangered ones down south. Do you think the boiled ones would have opened like that? Yep, I think so. So they, they're actually, the whole pieces of them are falling right out of their shell. They're just floating around loose in here. So that was the easier way to do it. Then, rather than steaming it? Yeah. Yeah, well, and see how these guys are all cooked and shriveled up already? Yeah. These ones here are still pretty raw. So they, they died and they, like the muscle relaxed, so they were partly open. Right. These guys here is are... They're, you can almost probably eat them, because that came to a boil, so they're probably, you could probably eat them, but we're going to fry them a little bit and give them some yeah, flavor. Well, with an ocean one, you would eat the whole thing, right? Jason said something about taking out just uh, parts of them, but I don't know. Now it's going to look like a, an otter's midden heap here. <laughs> Bits and pieces everywhere. Or raccoons. So we'll have to check back in with a uh, report on how they taste. Yep. Jason said they probably tasted like mud. So we'll They came see. from a nice clean part of the creek though. Alright. So we got what? Butter butter and garlic in there? Yep. So everyone's gonna go at the same time? Yeah. Yep. One, right. two, three, go. <laughs> Good. Gritty. Gritty. Really good. Did anybody get any sand? Yeah. Yep. Jared, did you get sand? I didn't, get any, I didn't get any. So, <laughs> I, so I win. Jackass. <laughs> it, does, it does taste good. Well, it's in butter and garlic. Of course <laughs> it's going to taste good. <laughs> kind of bland. By the way, I'm eating other garlic. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh, they're okay. There is some grit. Um, I'm sure there's... The way around that, but I don't even mind. It's not much grit. People say put them in a bucket of clean water and they'll purge. Oh, we could have probably dropped these guys in a bucket of spring water. These are fine. These are totally fine. I don't eat these again. No, oh. that's what we say now when we're not keeping our guts out. Maybe we'll feel differently in the morning. Well, <laughs> it's gonna be a long, <laughs> it's gonna be a long walk out of us. <laughs> We go in the lake and get some more. <laughs> Am I in the picture? Yep. But I'm probably dark, no? Nope, they're all fire lit. Oh, I'll hold the camera wow. for you. So maybe these are good because we got them from a uh, cold running stream from this system. But some people said they taste like mud, right? Or you said they taste like taste mud. I, just, I said that, yeah. These are good. I don't find it this time. I would eat these again. Yep. A little bit of grit's good for you anyway, right? Cleans your teeth and your guts. Oh, those are good. One left. So we should have been eating these every day. Maybe. Should have left the damn trail alone. <laughs> Alright. Round number two. Dig in. Type. I was gonna say that, yeah, that usually means that they eat more minnows than bugs, and yep, it happens a lot when, once they start getting bigger. Yeah, I've noticed that the younger ones have pinker.
I'm scared as that look. Uh, if you were a worm, would you be scared if that came that year? Ah. Is he talking about the fish or is he talking about him? Me too. You should be scared because I eat lots of trout. It's all opposite. Go. You see the viewfinder. It's uh, pack out day today, so I loaded everything up. The boys uh, slept at the other end. <coughs> they both they both snore, so when we moved camp, I ended up back at this spot over here. It was a pretty wise decision. I have a water spring down there. It's really great white noise and super quiet at night. I slept best I've ever slept on a camping trip. This one, but uh, maybe it's just because I'm so busy and so tired. But it's been great. So I'm gonna load up now, and I'll go meet the guys. We'll have some breakfast, and and then we'll pack out.
Oh no. It's alright, I've already gone through Oh no. I all the burnt ones. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying that, I'm saying it's already ready to go. Why, you got something else in mind with that? No, no. Oh, that's awesome. I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. It's a go. Smoking the smokies. The GoPro's running right now. Oh yeah. Do a tour at the camp. There's a much deeper bed of coals there than I would have imagined. Birch tree is dripping sap. I guess there's a little hole in it somewhere. Oh, <laughs> I know why there's a hole in it. Uh, you know why there's a hole in it now. So we're gonna uh, put a pot under it and uh, catch some some water. Are we gonna say why there's a hole in it? Uh, so in the morning, <laughs> we were gonna fire a rifle shot because Chris was sleeping on the other end of the lake, so we'd know when we were awake. So I, Jason shot this tree. <laughs> but then neither one of us thought about it when we were th seeing that sap dripping initially. <clears throat> you think that is that odd that it's running right now? Kind uh, of it seems kind of late in the spring for there to be this much sap flow. Usually they stop after the main run is done. They run right after the maples, right? So usually when your maples stop, your birches start. So we tap birches at the college and make syrup. Jason tapped some this year and made birch beer. Because we're late May now, right? Like yeah, what? yeah. But when you look up, these trees are like they're just starting to bud up, right? You can probably zoom right in on some of those branches if you hold it steady. They're just starting to bud up, so I guess the sap's still going. And it's a pretty good trickle. Yeah. Yeah, you can see actually it's, it's just coming from right here. Just from this injury. We'll get a drink anyway. Yeah. Well, little parting gift from our campsite. Hmm. It's warm and slightly sugary. Try drink. <clears throat> Might be a little bit of oatmeal in there still. Yeah, a little hint of hint of sugar in there. Mm. It's not like maple sap, but it's uh, like the sugar is there. This is kind of late season. It's usually uh, when I tap it, it's colder out, so the sap's usually cold, and it is a little more refreshing. This is kind of, uh, I don't know what this, how to describe that. You don't have to boil it, right? You could turn it into syrup. Yeah, if you boil it down, the ratio is 80 to 1, so it's a lot of sap to make syrup. But it's safe to drink, you don't have to purify it? Coming out of the tree? Yep. No. This one's been filtered by uh, however many meters of root, and then two and a half meters of trunk. Probably as filtered as it gets. 
So no bacteria in it? Well, there might be some tree bacteria, but... Right, just from it hitting the tree trunk as it comes down? Yeah, there might be some bacteria in the tree, but I don't think it's going to hurt you. It's not like it's uh, E. coli or anything, right, that you pick up from dirty living habits. So we decided that on the way back out, we'd try to get you a limit of trout if we could. So we're going to walk up slower than we came in and hit these little pools so everybody's rigging up. So we got a little pocket over here we're going to try. Straight down in there. Some of these are a little shallow, we gotta find the deep ones. So they won't all have uh, good sized trout in them, but. Yeah. So we found a really good spot to try trout tickling right underneath this uh, undercut bank here. Uh, it goes in a leg deep. So on the, when the sun gets nice and high, the trout don't feel safe. So they'll hide down on this undercut bank here, I'll show you. So you can see like right, right under here, the trout will hide on the high water, but I kind of spooked them, so... Uh, but yeah, I can't even reach my arm under there to grab anything, and Jason tried a few casts, but oftentimes the trout won't come out during daylight, early morning and late nights, just under that bank here. Catch another one, because I missed that one. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. Super real. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. So yeah, come closer. Can you grab the boat here? So do you see that log there? Yeah. It's right underneath that, there's a sharper log. 
So there's a, a log line here, and there's a log line there. Under the bank, you can't see. It's under the second log that it's near the bank. You're under that log, yeah. How far up? I can't see it anymore. It's coming. No, I can't see it anymore. Yeah? But you have no idea how hard this is for Jeremy to do right now. Oh, Spawning log. Really? Snapping turtles. Oh. <laughs> 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 That's hilarious. Well, at least you tried, Jeremy. That's the important thing. Oh, I thought you were... I would have... I would have done it. Yeah, I went down. It's kind of the, it's kind of the, uh, the uh, story for this trip. I've never seen them so small. <laughs> yeah. Maybe even just to look at a few of them. Looks like we could hammer the tiny population of tiny suckers pretty hard. <laughs> What are they doing? Going up. Going up hard. Oh, they're going to the trip. They're trying to move against that side. Yeah, okay. If they think this is an escape route. They're coming. Keep low, keep low. Oh. <laughs> oh, I missed it. Well, that's where they're going to go. So here. Are they going to come back up? Well, we're going to be fishing that big pool, right? One, two, four. Yep. Oh, they didn't? No, they missed. They all went through the hole. They went, they went through here. No, they went just under this. Oh, did they? I saw them all. I think there's more. You want to stand here, mister, and I'll... Uh... Get, get right here. Right there. Many have said that the journey is the destination. This no doubt fits for many cases, but in our case, if that were really so, then our destination was arduous and unforgiving. But maybe that was it. Maybe that is what made this trip worthwhile and set it apart from a more simple trip.
One where the journey merely required us to drive, park, and unload, and camp steps from the edge of our vehicle. Maybe the mystique of the trip was born out of the sheer effort it required. Can't be the whole way. Gotta be a better way. In total, our trip would need 10 hours of total dredge down and then back up the headwaters of a shallow, log choked creek. By doing so, it put us into territory for which there were only likely a handful of previous visitors. That, in and of itself, was something. And with no guarantee, it was a risk. We knew nothing for certain about Puddle Lake. For what it was, this trip could have been nothing more than three men hauling and dragging two canoes and their gear down and up a small creek. But it wasn't. It was more than this. It was an adventure born out of the hope for something great. It reached, fell short, but still delivered upon its promise. This trip didn't bring the monster brook trout Jason sought, or the easy fish limits I had my eyes set on. Give me a second, okay? Okay. But Jeremy had finally landed his first brook trout out of a lake. And that was something he could never forget. Keep going, Porter. Doing good. Heavy? Is that am I heavy? <laughs> All right. It's always a treasure to pull a native brook trout out of the water, no matter its size, to revel in its vibrant colors, and to be nourished by it. Which one? I think, I think it all looks like garbage, personally. Yeah, I mean the results speak, right? It's just a little too shallow or too sunny. We were as one within a chain of forces yeah. so vast that it is nearly incomprehensible. As part of this link, the role we serve in it is unmistakable. Okay. Our trip featured many skills and we all learned. We made wild drinks from wintergreen and Labrador tea and drank straight from upwelling springs and snacked on cattail shoots. We ate the flesh of perch, freshwater clams, deer, and of course, plenty of brook trout. Show it up. <laughs> we ate by smoking, baking, frying, boiling, and with the help of a basic wooden skewer. We ate well over fire. As a parting gift, we drank fresh sap from a birch. We wasted nothing, since nature provided us with the means to keep our meals fresh from spoil through cold spring water, smoke, and heat, and when possible, we kept our meals alive so that nature would protect itself from decay.
By following nature's rules, it did not abandon or punish us. Instead, it gave us life and energy. In return, we were sure to leave it as we found it, and disturb it as little as possible, and also take back what refuse had been previously discarded. It's a bigger one. Medium sized one. No, Tiny one. Yeah. Nature provided us with much on this trip, and for that, we owe her respect. That's a, that's a yearling. It's got no par marks and it's that big. Tiny. Hi, my name is Jeremy. I'm one wild crafter on YouTube, also famous in the Puddle Lake saga, which continues today. Uh, just really excited to have found the puddle. Good day, I'm Jason. Uh, I like to fish trout, and that's why I'm here. Yes. This is in. It's all slanted over. Yeah, we're we gonna tip. <laughs> we're not tipping the tender today. <laughs> we need them. They're swimming the waders. Yeah, it's a little cooler than I thought. No, oh, they're back on. What? You guys don't want me to be all the time? Okay. <laughs> Return for refund. An honest crew makes its own friends. We just marked six of she's four feet and marked six. Oh, yeah. There we go. One troll, two cast. That's it. And four hours of portaging. Uh, so oh, it's a real sausage party. <laughs> what, what are you at now for death? 40 feet! <laughs> Oh, double. You can get the fly rod out. Deer right through the winter, just waiting for me. That looks like a roast to me. <laughs> Tried to do it three times. Okay, go. We're good. We might be done here. The bear, right? Are you ready yet? <laughs> Woo! <It's cold. laughs> Woo! I bet you know, there's uh, not a whole lot of purpose to it, except that it's kind of good for presentation. I cooked them up the other night with my daughter, trout cat, and then I'm going to have a uh, pretty rockin' good reason. No, you're not. No, you're <laughs> lying. I wasn't going to say anything, I was going to show it. Awesome. <laughs> we got some perch and uh, Jeremy got some perch. Yeah. Nah. Yeah, they're not fish. The 
Jay, what you got? I, uh, <laughs> I bushcrafted this spatula. Wow. Using my axe. There it is. Can you, nice it? can you flip that around and we'll see where it ends up at the back? Can you put it all the way no. down the tail? Yeah, I can see it right here. Oh, oh. oh. oh no. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. So we're just loading out here now and I'm at the uh, bait station. We left our fish. I topped it up at one point. I can see that my sticks I put on, actually one of them looks like it's slightly disturbed. I put it across like that. So if any animal moved any of the sticks, it would knock the whole thing down. And it looks like something's been touching it, but nothing ate it. So maybe something walked by and bumped it or maybe it just fell off by gravity. We'll never know. Oh, we might know because the trail camera up here is running. And if the trail camera worked. So at this point, I'll um, show the video if any. If nothing follows this, that, that means uh, nothing happened. So here it is. Uh, everybody's worried about bears. I expressively try to make a me big mess with stinky fish and guts to try to attract an animal. So we'll, now we'll find out whether or not the, the fear is really warranted. This is not to say that you shouldn't be careful with your, uh, your campsite and keep it clean. We do keep our regular campsite clean. But this is just to say that maybe, you know, it's a little bit irrational to be worrying about bears. If you want to go camping, go camping. Be smart about it. And if you're smart about it, you won't have to worry too much. Because finding an, an animal out here in the real north is, uh, is quite difficult. Although, I should say, uh, uh, camping and campgrounds is far different. You are more likely to encounter raccoons and even bears because they're habituated to people and they associate people with uh, food but out here they don't associate people with food they so pe associate people with hunting and hunting pressure so anyway that just, that's all to say watch the video next if there's nothing that follows then no animal came in I don't have any triggers
Yes. This is in. He's all slanted over. Yeah. We're we gonna tip? <laughs> We're not tipping the tender today. <laughs> we need them. They're swimming the waders. Yeah, it's a little cooler than I thought. No, oh, they're back on. What? You guys don't want me to feed all the flies? Okay. Hey, return for refund. An honest brew makes its own friends. We just marked six, so she's four feet and marked yeah. fish. Oh, yeah. There we go. One troll, two cast. That's it. And four hours of portaging. Uh, so oh, it's a real sausage party. <laughs> what, what are you at now for depth? 40 feet! <laughs> On the boat. Oh, double. We can get the fly rod out. Deer right through the winter, just waiting for me. That looks like a roast to me. <laughs> Tried to do it three <laughs> times. Okay, go. We're good. We might be done here. The bear, right? Okay. Are you ready yet? <laughs> Woo! <It's cold. laughs> I bet you know, there's uh, not a whole lot of purpose to it except that it's kind of good for presentation. I cooked them up the other night with my daughter, trout cut, and then I'm going to have a uh, pretty rockin' didgeridoo. No, you're not. No, you're <laughs> lying. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> You've upset in the neighborhood. <laughs> okay, that's our dinner. I wasn't gonna say anything, I was gonna show it. Awesome. <laughs> we cut some perch and uh, Jeremy cut some perch. Yeah, nice Yeah, they're not fit. The beauty is You let some smaller ones go, but. Jose, hey. what you got? I, uh, <laughs> I bushcrafted this spatula. Wow. Using my axe. There it is. Hey, can, you nice then, can you flip that around and we'll see where it ends up at the back? Do you put it all the way no. down the Yeah, I can feel it right here. Oh, oh. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. And the uh, the blow by lost the two, so. <laughs> Okay, got my boat. <laughs> 